Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Yo Yo Man with Barnsley. In today's episode we're going to play the final two games of our Barnsley reign to see how well we can do in the Premier League with them and we're also going to review our end of season and then resign. So in terms of the fixtures that you missed since the last time you met, the first of which was a game I wish was a live com because it was absolutely fantastic. A 5-1 home win against Chelsea. Tammy Abraham put them in front 36 minutes in, but a Lewis Montano brace, an Ian van der Heerde brace and an Abel Ruiz goal gave us the five to absolutely smash them. Defeat followed that though away from home against Manchester United. We got B5-3. Uh, Lotaro Martinez and Marcus Rashford were braces for them and Zappa Costa getting the fifth. Gonzalo Ramos and Montanu did, uh, I think, were equal things up to 2 2. But at that point, Manchester United were just a bit too much for us and unfortunately, we fell to defeat. And then we followed that up with another defeat. This time it was at home against Liverpool. A disappointing one this one. Gonzalo Ramos put us in front 41 minutes in and it took to the 74th for Liverpool to equalise through Milik. And then Roberto Firmino crushed our hopes and dreams in the 90th minute and gave Liverpool the win. And finally, it was Leicester City away from home where we actually managed to get a win and three points. So Lewis Montanu getting the only goal of the game at 73 minutes in. So these final two games do mean something. We are playing for European football next season. It looks like the top seven will be able to get it. We play Wolves in today's game who are currently sitting in eighth and three points behind us. So if we are to win a day, I'm pretty sure we guarantee ourselves European football for Barnsley next season. And um, we've also got Bournemouth at home in the second game, should we require that extra game to be able to guarantee that spot. But it looks like we're either finishing sixth, seventh, or eighth. So this is going to be the lineup for the first game of today, which is a away against Wolves. Zoho starts in goal. Gresabel, Franco, Tisserand, and Sanchez in the defence for Fosto Vera and Nicolas Capaldo in the centre with Ian van der Heerde, Gonzalo Ramos and Abel Ruiz playing in behind Lewis Montano, who, just as a side note, is fighting to be top scorer against Marcus Rashford. They're both on 23 goals for the season and hopefully he can get at least one to be able to keep up that pressure on Rashford. Wolves did actually defeat us uh, when we were at home, so they are no easy side. Uh, they've obviously got our number somewhere. I think they beat us through. I think we were 2 0 up and they ended up beating us 3 2, if I remember correctly. But they've got a decent side anyway. Zé Lewis up top, Cavallero, Gibbs White, Lewis Fernando, uh, Oxley Chamberlain's in there, Willy Bolly, Bednarek, Rui Patricio. Some very good players. Let's get into the match. First highlight of the game 30 seconds in. Van der Heerde goes on a run. It ends up finding its way to Lewis Munter now and he gets his goal to potentially become the Premier League top scorer. This was all through Van der Heerde picking up the ball deep in his, well, not in his own half, not pretty deep, but it ends up being a slide challenge from Luis Fernando, who sets up Montano, and he gets his 24th goal of the season. Highlights straight from kickoff, though, so maybe Wolves will come straight back on us with Gibbs White, plays it to Caballero on this right-hand side, whips the ball in back post. Luis Fernando is there, and he makes up his slide challenge mistake and gets his third goal of the season. And levels things up at 1-1. One, one. An excellent through ball by Gibbs White here down the right-hand side. Great first touch to take a pass to uh, Sanchez on the left-hand side. And it's not a great cross and Zoho should definitely do better with that. If I was to stay at Barnsley one more season, um, which I'm not, a goalkeeper would be my first change. Zoho has made a numerous mistakes uh, leading to goals and he just doesn't look very, very solid. Highlight now, Goresabel picks up the ball on the halfway line. Capaldo plays it down the line for Lewis Montano on this right-hand side. Plays it back to Van der Heerde, tries to find Abel uh, Ruiz, but it comes to Sanchez in the box. Great challenge, but <laughs> again, a slide challenge from a Wolves player ends up giving us the opportunity to get the goal. And it's Abel Ruiz this time who takes full advantage of that with his 18th goal of the season. Sanchez, our left-back. Dallying on the ball too much gets slide challenge, but Ruiz is that a mop up and the keeper was already to the ground and we go 2-1 up seven minutes in. Highlights are coming thick and fast, only 13 minutes in, and we have ourselves another one. The ball's punted long to Lewis Montanu, and he's he's not that kind of player as Zoho, so I don't know why you're doing that. And Caviero can come oh my god. Caviero's causing us all sorts of problems on that right hand side. And he gets Wolves' second goal of the game to level things up. It's a long ball assist by Willy Bolly. And it's just stupid, really. Uh, Sanchez is pushed forward. That is my fault. Caviero, I mean, Zoho is too far 
He should be saving that. 17 minutes in, we have ourselves another highlight. It's Zoho with another big kick. Garasabel wins the ball back for us and plays it down the line for Montenegro. This is the kind of ball that he does want, but unfortunately can't beat Rui Patricio this time. Gibbs White with a free kick for Wolves. Plays it to Bednarek. Back out to Gibbs White on this left-hand side. Please get the challenge in. Please, somebody. He ends up hitting the side net. 30 minutes in now. Wolves on the attack once again. Van der Heerden almost wins the ball back for us, but it's played through Sanchez. Zoho, please don't mess this up. Thankfully, they remain composed and they don't actually give me a heart attack. We played it about quite nicely between the midfield and defence. Then we almost just give the ball away as simple as you like. But Van der Heerde keeps it. Montenegro with a strike. And he is an absolute monster. If you're on a save and you're in the second or third season, keep an eye out for this boy because he's absolutely done the business for us this season. He's 25th goal of the season. He's second for a dear. Van der Heerde with a nice little through ball. First touch, bang. That's how we like it. Wolves 2, Barnsley 3. This is a hell of a game. We are going to go to a bit more of a balanced team mentality. Go off that attack and see if we can retain possession a little bit more. And actually be able to hold a lead for more than two minutes. Which might not be possible as Wolves come forward with Bednarek on the halfway line. Gutierrez switches the play at a Gia Otto on this right hand side. The ball's played in the back post. Fernando gets his head on it. Azoho had it covered I hope. So that takes us to half time. Wolves 2, Barnsley 3. Uh, electric first half. Some good performances from our attacking players, particularly Montano. Um, but maybe defensively, we're looking at a little bit shaky. So the change to a balanced team mentality might be able to stop the rot in terms of the defence and keep Wolves out. First highlight of the second half looks like it's going to go at Wolves' is where the ball's played in. It's cleared. Ivan Caviero again getting himself another opportunity. Thankfully, this one goes over the bar. Fosto Vera picks up the ball from Gonzalo Ramos, tries to find Van der Heerde on the right hand side and unfortunately Wolves win it and they can break or we can. Back out Abel Ruiz on this left hand side, can he get the ball into the box? He goes for goal himself and Rui Patricio has a standard save. Lingard to Caviero, Zé Lewis, he goes for goal, inches, inches wide, they are banging on the door right now. With 10 minutes to go we will look to make some changes. Abel Ruiz has had a decent game but he's going to come off for Matthias Espinosa who can come on to that left-hand side and play as a winger. Arjen van der Heerde can come off for Malik Wilkes. And Jordan Williams can come on for Garasabel at right-back. Corner for Wolves. Only a few minutes to go in the match. And Bednarek, a second goal from a set-piece. And unfortunately, we find ourselves at 3-3. Three, three. I mean, I think that pretty much guarantees us European football if things are to stay as things do. But um, disappointing, I can see these set-piece goals. We haven't really been that bad from set-pieces. Uh, there's a highlight straight from kickoff. Tisserand finds Espinosa on this left hand side. He's got fresh legs, plays it into Wilkes, who goes for the header, hits the top of the crossbar. And that is going to be that for the match. Wolves 3, Barnsley 3. A good away point considering we got defeated at home. So uh, we will take that. But another late goal. Um, it seems to become a bit of a theme where we just concede really late on and end up dropping points. But it doesn't really matter. Let's see where we sit in the table after that game. Do we retain our sixth place position or do Norwich City go above us in a sixth? They don't. They must have got beat as well. Oh no, they beat Norwich. Uh, they beat Arsenal, sorry. Uh, so they have drew level on points with us. So going into the final game of the season, we are now finishing either sixth or seventh due to our superior goal difference. And Bournemouth are the opposition in the final game of our Barnsley reign. So for our final game against Barnsley, it is going to be Bournemouth at home. Our lineup will be this. Zoho in goal. Goresabel, Franco, Tisserand and Sanchez in the defence. Vera and Capaldo in the centre with Van der Heerde, Gonzalo Ramos, Abel Ruiz playing behind Montanu. Our strongest starting eleven. Nobody is particularly injured or anything. So we can field a full strength side. And let's go out and hopefully get a win. And the first highlight of the game comes eight minutes in. Garesabel picks up the ball, switches it to Sanchez on that left-hand side. And Lewis Montanu gets his toe on the end of it and puts us 1-0 up with his 26th goal of the season. Can he finish Premier League top scorer? We will see after this game. Ramos playing it back to Garesabel. It's a decent cross in. Sanchez gets his head on it. Montanu just helps it along its way. It was probably going in either way. And that is 1-0 Barnsley. Oh, Barnsley. I will miss managing Barnsley, to be honest with you. I'm not used to resigning from clubs and joining other clubs once I've started a save. But um, I like the side I've built with Barnsley. You know, we're likely to finish in the top six. 
it's absolutely phenomenal start for the series as itself and it's going to be a massive uh, milestone to try and beat with other clubs that we get promoted with as Gonzalo Ramos comes forward now with Van der Heerde goes for goal goes wide but yeah it's, it's like it's such a big sixth position with a newly promoted side is huge and to be able to beat that it's going to take a really special special squad and a special tactic and uh, going forward, obviously, once I resign, there's going to be opportunities in the championship. But I, I imagine a lot of them are going to be from newly relegated sides. So the, opp the opportunity to be able to spend a season in the championship likely isn't going to be there. They will want me to be promoted first season. Now, the finances are likely to be a lot better than Barnsley's was, for instance. And a lot of players will be able to sell to recoup costs and stuff like that. But at the same time... It's obviously going to give us a shorter time period to be able to develop a club and a tactic. We'll stick with this game though. Vera plays it in. Van der Heerde is there back post. He should be burying that on his weaker foot. Abel Ruiz picks up the ball on this left-hand side after Van der Heerde switches it. They win the ball back though. Montiel tries to play it out to Di Maria, but Gressabel picks it up. Capaldo goes for goal, hits the bar. Montenu was almost there to get the rebound, but we do get a corner from it at the very least. Who is it that's taking it? It's Fosto Vera taking it. It's played in the front post. Abel Ruiz is there. And it goes over. Angel Di Maria, 34 years old, is currently playing for Bournemouth. That's actually not that crazy these days, is it really? 39 minutes in and we have ourselves another highlight. Looks like it's going to be Gressabel playing the ball in. Goes all the way to Joaquin Sanchez on the left-hand side. Ruiz to Montenu at the front post. Two chances and he takes it at the second one. Gets his second goal of the game today. He's 27th goal of the season. This surely now, surely means Montenu now gets top goal scorer. Before this game, he was one goal ahead of Marcus Rashford. So unless Rashford's having a superb game as well, uh, it looks like Lewis Montenu in his debut season in the Premier League is going to get top scorer. Another highlight now, Fausto Vera on the left-hand side plays the ball in. Falls to Capaldo, but the ball is given away. Tisserand wins it back for us though, and Vera can bring the ball under control. We'll find Sanchez on the left-hand side in a pocket of space. It's played in. Van der Heerde was the man it was aimed at, but Bournemouth defend well and get the ball clear. Frank Orr finds Gerasabel on this right-hand side as the highlight continues. Van der Heerde picks it up. Can he whip the ball in? He can't. The shot is blocked though. Gerasabel. Again, we're just giving the ball away in the final third. But it comes to Abel Ruiz. He gets his 19th goal. I would love for him to get 20 goals this season. Come on, one more goal, Abel Ruiz, before we leave. That would be absolutely fantastic. But an assist for Lewis Montenu. Uh, this attack took uh, pff, at least two minutes in game. Going through the highlight, we did give the ball away a good couple of times, but Bournemouth couldn't get rid of it, and we go 3-0 up. And there we have it for half-time, Barnsley 3, Bournemouth 0. It's a pretty routine game so far. We'll uh, tell you what, we'll keep an eye on the league table, see where that keeps us. So we would remain in 6th position with this win. <laughs> Two points ahead of Norwich in 7th position, so that wouldn't be too bad. Van der Heerde with a corner, it's played in 54 minutes in right now. It's played in again, Tisserand is there, and Marcel Tisserand, our centre-back, gets his 4th goal of the season to make it 4-0 in the match. There has been games where we've just absolutely smashed teams, and it looks like this Bournemouth game is no exception. The ball coming back out to Van der Heerde after the initial corner, and uh, Tisserand with an absolutely perfect finish, a striker's finish. Uh, fourth goal of the season from centre-backs, not too bad. Another highlight now, Gonzalo Ramos gets dispossessed by Fraser. And Callum Wilson's got a lot of work to do, but he's done it. And he's in one-on-one. -on -one. <sighs> should be burying that, should be beating a Zoho there. But he doesn't, and we keep our clean sheet for now. I'm not going to make any changes for this game. There's nobody on the bench I particularly want to bring onto the pitch for our final game. I'm happy with our first eleven. And if there's no further games after this one, let's just keep them out there, see how they can do for the final 15 minutes or so. As Vera tries to find Van der Heerde on the right-hand side, Bournemouth look pretty dangerous on the counter, particularly with Callum Wilson and Ryan Fraser. Thankfully, Zoho is having a decent game and uh, we survive another counter-attack. Fraser with the free kick. It's played in. Kelly gets his head on it at the front and Lloyd Kelly gets his first goal of the season to get one goal back for Bournemouth, making it 4-1 with only 13 minutes remaining. It was as simple as you like, free kick. Absolutely nobody, Mark and Lloyd Kelly, unfortunately for us. And um, clean sheet, bye-bye. Only a few minutes to go, injury time to go, and time is just ticking away. Can we get one final goal? Van der Heerde finds Alan Franco at the back. Oh, it's offside. Never mind. Uh, that would have been nice to go 5-1 up. Alan Franco, I don't think he scores very many goals, so it would have been nice for him to get one alongside Marcel Tisserand. But um, 
It's not to be, and it looks like the game is going to finish Barnsley 4, Bournemouth 1. And there we have it, a pretty easy game, all things told. Montenu with a brace, Abel Ruiz with one, Marcel Tisserand with one. It was all over in the first half. And that rounds up our Premier League season with Barnsley. Let's take a look, just to confirm our position, our points, our goal difference, and the yardstick which all future seasons will be compared against. So there we have it. We have qualified for the Europa League. Uh, that's neither here nor there. That's not, not important. What is important is the position, the points, and the goal difference. So, sixth position, absolutely sensational for a newly promoted side. Um, any side that gets newly promoted would take that in a heartbeat. 26 goal difference is absolutely massive. Uh, we had some really, really convincing wins during our league season. The likes of against West Ham, which we won 7-1. Did we be absolutely thrash Burnley at one point? And there was another 7-1 in there. I can't really remember. 64 points is a huge total. We ended up finishing 36 points clear of relegation. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And there's the confirmation. Barnsley qualify for the Europa League. Montenegro does finish Premier League top scorer. As we can see here, three goals clear of Marcus Rashford. Had a sensational second half of the season and banged in a lot of goals. After he's, I think he was injured in January for a few weeks. So that's why he didn't play all 38 games, only 35. But um, unbelievable player. So we've obviously got the end of season bits and bobs to go through in terms of the best 11 for Barnsley. Jamal Blackman is the goalkeeper. Tony Herrero, Batella, Tisserand and Cavaria as our defence. Obviously with one more season I imagine that would have been all change. Bissoli and Alex Mowat in the centre. Van der Heerde, Gonzalo Ramos, uh, Malik Wilkes and of course Sebastiano Esposito who was our main man in the championship. But in terms of this season, our end of season awards... Lewis Montenu ends up winning fans player of the season. Fosto Vera coming close in second place and Marcel Tisserand in third. Goal of the season was Tony Herrero. Um, that was the first game of the season against Southampton. It was an absolute worldie, if I remember correctly. Let's load it back up. We'll take another look at it. But uh, if you cast your minds back to the very beginning of this season, this was the goal that ended up winning the uh, goal of the season, the very first match in the Premier League. Absolutely sensational. That gave us the three points as well. Great, great stuff. Lewis Montenu ended up winning signing of the season. £4.46 million. Pounds. He's just an unbelievable player. And of course, he won Young Player of the Season as well. So Montenu really did wrap up um, all of the awards at the end of the season. In terms of the club vision and expectations meeting, obviously this will not apply to us. But it looks like they are wanting to sign higher reputation players to increase the reputation of the club as a whole. Which, you know, we've had problems with trying to sign players who have ended up deciding to go to other clubs purely down to our lower uh, expectation end of next season these these will be changed i would imagine avoid a relegation battle seems a little bit low for a team who's just finished in sixth position and there's the confirmation that lewis montenu finishes premier league top goal scorer at 19 years old i just keep looking at him and he's absolutely beautiful in terms of the premier league uh, team of the year montenu is our only player involved it looks like it's pretty much liverpool with a, a smidge of Manchester United and then one player from ourselves. Liverpool, of course, ending up winning the Premier League by five points. Manchester United in second. Man City and Arsenal completing the Champions League spots. But in terms of our squad and stuff, obviously, there's going to be no further changes from ourselves. Um, some key players for us, though, obviously, Lewis Montano. Just look how he's developed over the course of the season. Absolutely brilliantly. 27 goals and six assists in 35 Premier League games. There's nothing short of sensational for a 19-year-old. Who cost us that little and um, it's going to be sad that we won't be managing him going forward but hopefully if if not anything he's going to be a massive cash cow for Barnsley should they come to sell him at some point in the future uh, next up Fosto Vera a key player for us in defensive midfield playing that deep line playmaker role and um, I was reading stuff on Twitter that, that that is probably a bug why he's getting such high average ratings but I don't really care He's got a 7.41 over the course of 37 games in defensive mid with nine assists to his name. A decent player was signed for four and a half million pounds from Argentinos Juniors in the summer. tisserand has been an absolute rock for us at the back. We signed him in the championship from Wolfsburg for 1.3 million and he's more than proved his worth in the Premier League. Getting a 7.17 um, as a centre back is nothing to sneeze at in the top league. Abel Ruiz, not our player but a fantastic one. Players on the left, players up front. His uh, potential has been reduced compared to what it was when we signed him. But if I was still to stay at Barnsley, I would be going after this guy. Either on loan again um, or a permanent transfer if the fee wasn't too much. 
Tony Herrera was signed for three and a half million pounds in the championship. Yeah, his potential has went down as well. And we do have a better left back at the club with Joaquin Sanchez. But he's a decent enough player. Gonzalo Ramos we had every season we were here. Um, after our first season, two seasons. Playing in attack and midfield. He's been absolutely sensational. And Benfica have themselves one top quality attack and midfielder. He looks like his potential is pretty much maxed out now at 20 years old. But he's still absolutely unbelievable. Nicholas Capaldo was one of the signings of the season, in my opinion. A real engine in the centre of midfield. Averaging a 7.06 in a, a non-glamorous box-to-box -box midfielder role which generally doesn't attract that many goals or assists but he ended up getting five goals and four assists to his name in 33 Premier League games with an average rating of 7.06 Joaquin Sanchez our highest fee paying transfer look at his growth already um, three and a half star current five star potential left back going to be one of the best left backs in the league I have no doubt physically he's absolutely sensational and he only played 13 games got himself five assists after joining us in January 7.05 average ratings absolutely fantastic we'll quickly talk about Ian van der Heerde. he's been up and down in terms of his attributes he's been picking up little niggly injuries here and there but for £120,000 I think we found ourselves a little bit of a bargain absolutely fantastic uh, attributes played one season one full season in the championship getting the eight goals and seven assists then had a better season uh, in terms of his output getting seven goals and 11 assists in the Premier League and I've no doubt he will continue to improve over the course of next season. And Donny Garesabel was signed on a free transfer in the summer at right back. And he's been solid enough. It would be one of the areas where I would seriously consider improving. And with Crystal Palace sniffing, he would probably be one of the first players I would sell as well during the summer. But other than that, there's nobody else I really want to address right now. Alan Franco is one of the best centre-backs at the club without a shadow of a doubt. And he was a great signing at £4.8 million. But... Barnsley, it's been an absolute pleasure. We have achieved everything that was set out when we first joined the club. We're buying the stadium. We've massively improved the facilities. We've got them in our Premier League club, got them European football, had some amazing wins along the way. We'll just look at that 7 1 against Burnley, 5 1 against Chelsea, 4 1 against Bournemouth. And if we take a look, has there been any more massive wins? I think there was. 4 uh, 0 against Spurs is a massive one, 7 1 against West Ham. We really have smashed some teams in this league. I'm really made a mark with Barnsley. But all good things should come to an end. And with that said, we will resign from our contract with immediate effect. Um, the chairman's trying to keep me. I'm, I'm proper gutted. I do want to stay, but that's not the point of the series. I think my time has come to an end. And that is going to be that. We have left the club. Barnsley boss resigns. Uh, only duo. Duo. Uh, where is everybody else? No, <laughs> at least our coaching staff will remain at Barnsley and be able to keep them at a level footing. And now our mind is set on finding ourselves a new job in the championship. Now I never really considered this. I hope our reputation isn't that high that uh, championship clubs won't actually take too much notice of me. I'm only a three-star uh, manager, so hopefully championship clubs will be uh, keeping an eye out for me. I've already got them set up so a job center there's no current jobs available but of course has the end of season came yet it's still it's still the playoffs to settle so maybe something might open up after that but in terms of job security we have got a couple of insecure jobs in Brentford or oh, I don't say Brentford have been relegated have they Brentford would have been a decent little challenge but they have Middlesbrough's out as well but Brighton insecure job there I might end up uh, declaring my interest in the Brighton job we obviously are pretty familiar with Brighton after play with them on FM19. They've of course got a much different squad now, but let me let me manage Brighton. I tell you what, I'm going to declare my interest for the job and see if they're a taker. But that's going to be enough for today's episode. You will find out who we end up managing in the next episode. But until next time, lads, take it easy.